Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Class Run Amok. And here we have Run Amok fully transformed up into his awesome looking vehicle mode. Now to my surprise this figure is a completely brand new sculpt and doesn't share any engineering nor parts from a previously released War for Cybertron figure. As we take a look at the detailing you can see that all of the hubcaps have been picked out in this really nice looking white paint application. I was also quite surprised to see that this figure is painted really nicely as well. Most of this figure is painted white as opposed to molded in white plastic you can see for this entire top section this is a transparent piece that has got some white paint over the top and the same can be said here for this rear end of the vehicle now something which is apparent with this release which was also apparent on the Earthrise Sunstreaker is Hasbro and Takara haven't been able to match the colors and this is really odd in my opinion as both of these are painted white however this one here is a lot lighter of a white when compared to the more darker white that we have here for the roof of the vehicle that's quite an eyesore in my opinion and I wish that they could have better matched the colour scheme but nonetheless you can see some nice detailing there for the transparent plastic it is this more darker smoky plastic as well which I think creates for a better illusion when in vehicle mode and we've got some nice painted window wipers with the Decepticon signia here on the top as we turn to the side of the vehicle you can see the paint apps here are all very crisp and sharp and as we turn to the underside, you can see how the figure does store. So in all, a really awesome looking vehicle mode. This figure will no doubt be retooled into his partner in crime, that being Runabout. And I'm really looking forward to a black repaint of this mold. We've got the exhausts there sculpted in at the back with the license plate section sculpted there and the rear headlights have also been painted. The figure does roll really nicely as well, which is amazing to see, seeing as this is a battle charger. So this figure is incredibly fast flowing in terms of how he rolls along the ground. In terms of a comparison, let's bring out Deluxe Class Smokescreen. You can see here for comparison that he's actually quite a large looking vehicle mode, especially in terms of his width. He's a lot wider than that of Smokescreen. In terms of height though, they are roughly exactly the same. And then in terms of height there, you can see that they're also exactly the same. So definitely a reasonably sized deluxe class. In terms of transformation, to begin with, what I recommend doing is coming to the rear end of the vehicle and just popping this whole section up. And as you do so, you're going to want to fold in these wheels here to the back. Once that's done, we're going to want to loosen this whole section, take the arms here and just gently wiggle those out and then repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So just take those and then bring those down we can then rotate this entire waist assembly and then coming to this area, we're going to want to hinge this all the way up and then take this piece here and hinge this back. And where these two slots are, these transparent pegs will slide into in order to solidify that. You can see here that we do have some white tabs on the back. These will slide in. I can just show you into some tabs on this transparent piece of plastic. So you're just going to want to align those up and shoot those in there and then that will conceal over the top. Turning now down to the lower region, separate this section and here you're going to want to bring out the faux wheel, bring this section down and then this piece will come down also. Of course, repeat the same process, bring this down and fold down the wheel and now we're going to want to extend this joint. Now you can see in here that there is a tab that will slide into this slot. So just bring this all the way up, snap that nice and securely into place and repeat the same process here for the opposite side. So snap that nice and securely, rotate the arms around flip out the fists and repeat the same process here for the opposite side and then bring down this front torso section and I recommend bringing in the gun in order to actually pry the head out as it's very difficult to get this out otherwise so just stick that in there and try to elevate that lift this over the top and then just conceal the torso and this piece should slide in between the arms just like that and that is the complete transformation for deluxe class Earthrise runner mark and so now taking a look at Run Amok here in his robot mode, I think this figure has turned out really nicely and as stated before, I really do hope that we get the repaint and slight retool of his partner Runabout very soon from Hasbro and Takara Tomy, as I think a black repaint of this would look absolutely fantastic. This figure really does give me 2010 era vibes, really does throw me back to some of the old Hunt for the Decepticons figures in terms of how well the plastic holds up and just in terms of the overall look of the figure, I think that he's very well proportioned and is really a substantial looking deluxe class. Bringing him in for a closer look and taking a look at the head sculpt, 
you can see that we've got this fantastic, huge looking mouth plate there, very faithful to his appearance and the purple Decepticon eyes all look really nice. This is just a complete white plastic sculpt, so there is no paint applications applied to this, and it isn't painted white whatsoever, but really nice defining details there. The Decepticon insignia on this faux chest, unfortunately, they couldn't find a way to utilize the real windscreen, so they have gone with faux pieces. However, in my opinion, I think that proportionally, it suits the character a lot better. And then as we turn down to the arms, you can see all of the sculpted in detailing here. I think that all looks quite nice. And I do like how they've managed to get the back section in a very accurate placement. This is exactly how Run Amok looked. So that's fantastic to see. And then as we turn down to the lower region, you can see all of the sculpted in detailing here for the lower torso, as well as there for the shins and finally for the feet. They have once again opted to go with faux parts here for the back wheel. So unfortunately, they couldn't find a way to incorporate the real wheels of the rear vehicle into the backs of the feet, which is a shame. And to add further insult to injury, they haven't painted the hubcaps white in order to match this front section, which in my opinion, I believe if they did that, it would have greatly amplified this and would have made it look slightly more natural in the way that it sits. But you can see the contrast between the black plastic and obviously the painted rim here really doesn't look all that great, which is a shame, but I'm pretty sure it'd be rather easy just to paint that white. And then turning around to the back, you can see that we do have some hollow spaces. However, that's just the nature of the transformation. And then bringing in his blaster for a closer look, this is a completely new sculpt. And in my opinion, is a really awesome looking weapon. You can see we've got some nice sculpted detailing there. In terms of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look left to right as well as up and down. It can also nod side to side. The arms, oddly enough, can't rotate the full 360, and that's due to there actually being an extra bit of molded plastic. You may be able to see it there, this slight notch, and it is also apparent on the opposite side, which stops you from bringing the arm backwards, which is really unusual. I've never seen that on a Transformer figure before, but we do get enough range of motion in order to get him into some cool poses, so the arms can rotate upwards. However, at this point, they do start to stop, and then we can just bring this down and it does hinge out to the sides. We also do get a full 360 there at the bicep, as well as a 90 degree bend there for the elbow, and then a full 360 rotation there for the waist. The legs can kick forwards that far to a great degree, as well as back to that far. He can also do the splits, full 360 rotation there at the fire. We do have a single joint here for the knee. However, if you disengage the locking mechanism in order to solidify the shin to this section of the knee, you can get a great range of motion utilizing the double hinge joint, which is mainly due to transformation, and then just connecting that back into place and turning to the foot articulation. We do have ankle rocker joints side to side and we can also pivot the foot forwards and backwards due to transformation. So in terms of articulation, I think that it's more than reasonable. Unfortunately, we don't get any wrist rotation. And as stated, I'm really unsure as to why they added that extra notch there on the back of the shoulder section so that we can't do the full 360. But nonetheless, a really well articulated deluxe figure. And here for a Decepticon size comparison, here we have run amok compared to both Impactor as well as to Astro Train. And you can see that he is a really nice size deluxe figure. He's a little bit smaller than that of Impact or how this figure was really large for his scale but you can see when compared to Astro Train who is supposed to be a leader class I don't have any issues here in terms of the scale of Run Amok. I think that he's a really substantial deluxe and when you just hold him up against even to Impact or he does feel slightly more substantial in terms of the amount of plastic used than Impact or that could be down to the fact that this figure is painted probably a lot better than Impact or but a really nice figure nonetheless. Very quickly turning to reverse transformation of course you're just going to want to remove Run Amok's blaster and then take the wrists here and just fold those in on both sides. Come down now to these legs, disengage this joint and the way you're going to want to maneuver this is you're going to want to hinge this section back and you can see that there is a tab here that is going to plug into this slot. You're going to want to make sure that that clicks into place otherwise the figure will not roll along the ground whatsoever. So just align that up and snap that nice and securely into place. We can then take this piece here, lift this over and then collapse the heel spur in. Repeat the same process here for this side. So fold this all in and then snap that nice and securely into place. Bring this over, align these pieces up, and snap those into place. Take this section, rotate this all the way around now. Come to this back piece and you're just going to want to hinge this. It's on a very tight hinge joint, but hinge this forwards. Bring out the faux chest, fold the head sculpt in and then just collapse that down. And then here what I like to do is you can see two slots here and here that these two tabs will peg into. So just bring this over the top and then just try your best to align those. You might have to give the sides a good squeeze in order to get these nice and secured. So just tab those in, bring the arms around and fold those to the back. And you can see we've got a slot there that will tab into this tab. So just according that in 
and then align that into place, just ensuring that all of that is nice and aligned. Turn around to the other side now and repeat the same process. So just angle this up, pinch this section back, and then just apply enough force so that slides in. We're then going to want to lift this section up, fold out the wheels on both sides, and then this will come over the top and will snap really nice and securely into place, just ensuring that he does roll nicely, which he does, which is fantastic to see. Here we have Runner Mark fully transformed back into his sports car mode. So that was my review on the Transformers Earthrise Deluxe Class Runner Mark. I actually really did enjoy this latest release by Hasbro and Takara Tomy. I think that Runner Mark here has a really interesting mould and it's great to see that they did indeed completely give him a brand new mould rather than just retooling a previous figure. Of course, I can expect this to be repainted and slightly retooled perhaps into his partner Runabout. But just taking a look here at Runner Mark, I think that the vehicle mode looks really cool. We do have some slight issues in terms of panel lining here. However, that's just the nature of the transformation and this figure is only a deluxe class it would have been nice to have seen them perhaps perfect the paint application so that this paint matched the front section here unfortunately that's not the case but the detailing for vehicle mode I think is more than suffice as stated this figure really does give me vibes to some of the old 2010 hunt for the Decepticons figures just in terms of the way he feels I think the plastic is very substantial even more substantial than what we're used to with the War for Cybertron figures which is great the transformation is also rather enjoyable whilst there are some cheats in terms of faux pieces but most noticeably the fact that they haven't managed to utilize the rear wheels for the hill spurs i still think that the overall look is more than adequate and is of course really accurate to run amok's appearance so in terms of aesthetic i think that he's almost perfect in my personal opinion and robot mode whilst articulation may lack slightly in terms of the range of motion there for the shoulders you can definitely get him into more than enough poses it would have been nice if we could have got some wrist articulation but once again that's something that i can live without and setting those minor critiques off to the side i think we're left with a really interesting looking robot mode the head sculpt looks fantastic and I think that the paintwork for the most part is really nice on this release so I definitely recommend this especially if you are a fan of the character of Runamuck and the battle chargers in general. I really do hope that you enjoyed this review if you did please do let me know down in the comment section below and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.